I guess we should start with this Jack Perry story because you mm -hmm. wrote in the Observer about the communication between him and Tony Khan. And then I think Brian wrote a story on the website today where Jack disagreed with some of what you wrote. Yeah, he says he did not apologize, but he did have the timeline, you know, like where, you know, he, he had gone through uh, for a while. They didn't talk. Then I guess he had November a couple months later when they did talk and then they were going to bring him back. And then he thought that um, when Punk came back, that all of a sudden the talk of bringing him back cooled off. And he said he even asked for his release. And, um, you know, now he's in New Japan. You mean he's, when Punk went to WWE? When Punk started, yeah, at Survivor Series. He said that, that, that uh, like, the talk of bringing him back kind of cooled off. But he said he never apologized. I had heard that he had, you know, apologized and wanted to, you know, wanted to come. Obviously, he wanted to come back. And when he wasn't being brought back, um, I guess he asked for his release and was turned down and now he's in new Japan doing his gimmick and, um, we'll see what happens. Do you know what he has left on his contract? No, I don't know the time frame left on his contract, but like I said before, it's like, I could understand the suspension of him when it was made at the time, you know, in August. Um, I didn't disagree with it or anything like that, but after about two months, it was kind of like, okay. You know, it's it's time to bring him back. You know what I mean? It's like, um, because what he said, you know, if it wasn't for Punk, you know, react Punk's reaction to what he said, he wouldn't, you know, I mean, what he said would not have even been an issue to anyone, you know? Um, and because of what happened, it became an issue and, you know, and all that. But it's like, to me, it's like, it's, it's time to bring the guy back. Um, but you know we'll have to wait and see how this all all plays out you know i mean it's um i just you know it's again like it's it's seven months you know it's like for that you know it's like no i mean like you know if, if <laughs> we've had guys get into backstage real fights without suspensions for seven months yeah um let alone a line that you know i you know i'm, I'm sure everyone wishes that he never said it was it was not you know it was just wouldn't you know I, I understand why he said it. I mean, I totally understand why he did it, but it's probably would have been better not to. And if it was with yep. somebody else, it still would have caused a confrontation, but they probably would have, you know, with anyone else, they'd have gone, why'd you say it, blah, blah, blah. They might even dislike each other, but it would, you know, it would have been gone the next day. You know what I mean? There might be like a little grudge going further, but nobody would talk about it and nobody would care. And there certainly be no suspensions or anything coming off of it. So, um, yeah, that's the deal. Okay, here's the other thing in reading your story that I kind of didn't understand, which is the dis the communication between the two of them was through AEW's lawyers at first, and then he and Tony um, did talk um, sometime later. You know, I think is it because of the suspension that he had to communicate through the lawyers? um because there was all, no legal thing i don't know of the the deep i i think it was maybe that tony just didn't talk to him until tony finally talked to him huh it it sounds like uh at least it, it sounds like from my perspective from the outside looking in tony blames jack for having for for having to suspend punk and then when having punk fire, having to fire yeah, punk. sorry having to fire punk. and then when punk shows up in wwe it's just worse and it's just like well you know that that see see what happened you made it worse and now he's on the opposition it seems like that is what perry is actually being blamed for i can't say that but i can't disagree with that um either you know i mean it 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 has always felt to me really weird when he was gone for you know past that whatever it was you know the first month you know i figured yeah he'll be suspended for a month six weeks you know even two months once that period ended and then it was kind of like and, and again you know people have asked tony about jack including me and it's always a non it was always a non-answer you know what i mean it was always like it, it, i can't talk about it or i won't talk about it or or just not or just not an answer and mm -hmm. i just thought like after again after like two months were up i just thought that's that's weird because it wasn't you know, as far as like a, a, a thing, I didn't feel it was like, you know, uh, that bad compared to so many other things that happen in wrestling on a daily basis. And, and, um, 
you know, I mean, we'll just have to watch the whole thing play out. But, but yeah, like I was told that he did apologize. He claims he never apologized for it at all. And so that's, that is the basic disagreement of what I was told and what he said. Everything else is pretty much, you know, okay. You know, I mean, I guess, I guess he's says he has no date to return and I don't know that he has a date to return, but I sure hope he returns because yeah. that would be really ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and again, and if he's never going to return, then look, if you're, if you don't want to book him, for whatever reason, then then we're yeah, release him, let him work for New Japan full time. So, or 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 WWE for that matter, which right. would probably who would probably, I'm sh <laughs> that would be interesting because WWE for sure would want to take him, but Punk would probably blow a gasket if they did. Um, but I don't think that Punk has anywhere near the influence on Levesque and these guys that he had on Tony Khan. So it becomes a really weird issue. And again, WWE doesn't need anyone and doesn't need any trouble. And they may just go, hey, you know, we don't need the trouble. But, I, you know, Jack's a good wrestler. Also, you know, in WWE, obviously, size, you know, but it's not as it's not as big a deal. And, um, you know, the whole thing of, um, you know, the, the Luke Perry son and everything like that. I mean, WWE is going to like that, too. You know, they like that that clinging into a mainstream thing. Um, so, ah, you know, I guess we just have to wait to see how it all plays out. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be a nice, uh, experiment to see if punk does have that kind of uh, ability to, to say no on stuff or to create some sort of, you know, Hey, I don't, I don't know if this is safe for us to work together, but uh, on the other end, it would be good for WWE to say, Nope, like we can handle this scenario. Like we, you know, we understand how to deal with these types of things. You both can be working for the same company and well, not have to. You know, I mean, AEW should be the same way. Yes. Should've. I mean, I mean, I mean it, 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 it should have from, from day one. I mean, it, it always should have, you know, but whatever. Can we look at some uh, WrestleMania big picture stuff here? Sure. Now, you, you, you had all the matches that are currently uh, currently signed for the show. Uh, there are still going to be some that are going to be added. And I was mostly looking at the big picture of, you know, when you go back through the history of the show, you know, the mainstream uh, knowledge of what's going on here. Uh, and you, we can even go back, what, it's uh, WrestleMania 28 and, and 29 when The Rock comes back against John Cena. Because of just, I guess, the different media and how Peacock instead of pay-per-view, it feels like this is bigger and more mainstream than that time was. And I think The Rock is also a bigger star. Rock but... was a really big star then, too, though. Yeah, he was. I, I, he you, was. Know, you know, I mean, Rock and Cena, was a, a, both of them, especially the first one, was a giant match. Also because of, you know, the um, it had its built-in storyline because Vince manipulated Cena into ripping rock, you know, because Vince was mad that rock wasn't at the time coming back and then rock used it, you know, to, um, and, and the irony of that, obviously, you know, seems apologized for that many times anyway. So, you know, because now he's in the same shoes, but the, um, but the, you know, the rock used that to make it real, which was, yeah. you know, a big thing. And, and, you know, again, here, in this one, he's tried to do the same thing with, with Cody and everything like that, you know, and it was, would have been the same way with Roman is, is to make it real because that's, you know, um, that's his, um, I guess, you know, again, coming from, um, the old school of wrestling, you know, being you know, the guy has followed wrestling. Dwayne was born in 72. So I would say he was following wrestling, in its in his own weird way by probably 78 79 and he was probably in his own way intelligently following it because of the grandmother's promoter and everything like that from the early 80s long before he ever got into the business and then he was a student of the business when he was in the business um you know he is going to go and think of things in that way to to try to make it more real than than um you know um maybe I mean, he also has a lot more latitude on what he can say than other people would have. Obviously, that's that's been pretty clear. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.